am so glad we had this time together. Bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly membership fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Y'all like this haircut? Mm -hmm. I decided to cut it off for the 2023. Y'all like these shades? Y'all better go on over there to uptopbeauty.com and check them out. But let's finish talking about, child, we so over this bitch right now. But you know, we fitting to move into Jackson Family Values. Now, the non-paying members, a sneak peek on Friday. But um, the paying members will receive one, two, and three this weekend. But anyway, let's finish talking about LaToya Jackson by LaToya Jackson. They all sat down to talk, but it was soon clear nothing would be accomplished. Despite Marlon's promise, not one member of my family ever called. And when Jack noticed Edwards was wired recording the entire meeting, he exploded. Apparently, the family doesn't want to bring this to a peaceful end. He fumed, and I ought to report you, a licensed attorney getting involved in an attempted kidnapping, because you know at this point right now, uh, the family is in cahoots to kidnap Latoya to bring her back home, maybe to put her in some kind of mental institution. I don't know. And supposedly, the family lawyer, Edwards, was a part of of the caper, the caper to kidnap Latoya. A month later, I again tried to assemble all the family attorneys together to smooth out the problem. So just to remind you, the situation is this. She is married to Jack Gordon, okay? And according to what you put, all put in the comments, she ain't never hunch Jack Gordon or consummate the murder. Not all pimps. Screw their hoes. Sometimes they screw their hoes mentally. And like when I was saying, MK Ultra sometimes is the ding dong, i.e., the finesse. It's not like I'm shocked and awed at the fact that she never hunched them. And some of y'all are trying to say that Latoya still may be a virgin. What? The, the, getting back to the situation, child, I went to the left. My bad. Okay. Because she's married to Jack Gordon, I do believe that the family contacted her and was like, look, you're going to have to give up your deed. Because now that you're married to this Jack Gordon, that means that he can manipulate you into signing over your piece of Havenhurst to him. A month later, I again tried to assemble all the family attorneys together to smooth out the problems. I still didn't feel safe. Having subsequently learned that several of my siblings attended family meetings where the kidnapping was discussed. This hurt me a thousand times more than anything mother or Joseph did. If among them not one single thought enough of me to call and warn me, who knew where it would end? Did you think of calling one family member and saying, hey, I did Playboy, get ready? Girl, oh my God, the entitlement of Latoya. That's why I was like, Latoya, she, she, she a little lunchbox. You can do whatever you want and the family is supposed to understand because it's you. All I wanted was for them to mind their own business. Let me live my life and stop this insanity before somebody got hurt. A few days later, TV newscasters were reporting that Jack Gordon, manager of LaToya Jackson, had been accused of murder. The tabloids had a field day calling for our comments on the condition that we grant him an interview. One television McCracker offered to show us footage that would prove the allegations was a story my powerful family had planted in the media. 
I no longer trusted anyone and refused. For the record, Jack has never been formally accused, suspected, or even questioned regarding any such matter. Thinking back all of those years, I realized that mother was the gilding force behind the cruelty and abuse. This lady who pretended to be so gentle on the surface had in fact caused all the turmoil in our lives. We'd always thought that it was Joseph, but it was her telling him what to do and how to do it. Like I said to her before, she was always throwing the rock and hiding her hand, convincing everyone, outsiders and my own siblings that she was sweet, kind-hearted and compassionate. Little did they know that the minute they were out of earshot, she talked about them very, very viciously. Paused. So I'm already into the next book, Family Values, and uh, I might be inclined to believe that she, she, she is not as innocent as we assumed Catherine to be. Just the mere fact that she allowed her children to be physically abused, um, you know, it makes me look at her sideways. The same way I do the DeBargis, mom. I yeah. think that um, what matters most to her is family at all costs, even at the cost of beating the hell out of your children just to say that you are still in a family. Little did they know that the minute they were out of earshot, she talked about them very, very viciously. After seeing it so many times, I finally had to face the fact that this was her true personality. I was glad to spend most of 1990 in Europe where with an ocean between my family and me, I felt safer. Okay, let me say something else. Listen, I know a lot of women Okay, a lot of women who have adult conversations with their children. And just because you're a mom or mother and you bore children does not mean that you're mentally capable of actually running a household, running a family. You could have seven, eight, nine, ten children and still not know how to parent or how to mother. I'm not saying this about Catherine. I'm just going off what's going on in the book. I know several women that talk to their children about their other children. I okay. would say being the oldest child, uh, Reby probably have the t has the tools to mother and parent correctly. Because when you have that many kids, the mother ain't raising them. There's no way the mother can watch every child. The mother is raising them in addition to the older child. And sometimes what happens, like in my case, I had to parent my mother and my younger siblings. Oh, what okay. I'm saying is I can see how she got that perspective over the years and looking back. My mother is my mother, but the fact of the matter is she had me young and what was more important to her was that her children had everything. And sometimes that meant her working two or three jobs to make sure that we had it. As I write this, I can honestly say that despite everything, I'm happier than I've ever been. When I'm not working very hard at my career recording and touring, I devote time to various children's causes, among them babies born with AIDS. I can't say it's not painful being estranged from most of my family. I wish it could be otherwise, but my parents have made it clear that unless I acquiesce, forfeit my freedom and my career, and go home, nothing will change. Forfeit your career? Why would, listen, that's just dumb. Let me drink a, some Coca-Cola on that. That's just dumb. Why would they ask you to forfeit your career? Because your money is the household money. That's dumb. So do you mean to tell me they want you to just sit around and do Nathan? Come on, girl. No, they want you to work. It's just they don't want you to work under Jackie E. Gordy, D.D., they don't want that. They want you to come home and work with Joseph. That's what they want. So Joseph can still get his 10%. 
which will probably go straight to Catherine. Child, I can't wait to read y'all this next book. There's so much tea in this goddamn book. Whoever it is that said or mentioned the family value books, first of all, I love you. Second of all, I shouldn't have had to buy my own fucking book. I often find myself thinking back to the last time I was home. It was summer 1989 before the kidnapping attempts, and all that was to follow. I wanted so badly to see mother and my family that I became homesick and despondent. I told Jack I want to go home. He looked at me and sighed. Okay, he said reluctantly. After you go to your house, if you can get out, you call me. This is the end, though, because I don't think you're ever going to come out again. But that's your decision again. That's where Jack Gordon is mind manipulating her. It's the finesse. I'm telling y'all, that's why I know I'm so happy that I was never lost and turned out because some of them pimps could have got my ass. They could have. Now, Pimp pimp Sharp, I'm a little too fat for him, okay, or a little too thick for him. But that mother hunchy pimp seat, man, them some smooth butter hunchies. I'm telling you, that Bishop Don Juan, I can't say. I I can't say, man. He old as dirt, brother, but... mm, Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got this one back home. Juju the gentleman. Oh, thank you, goodness. I ain't never, ever, ever took two minutes of my life on the phone with that motherfucker. It wouldn't have been good. Jack took me to the airport as I boarded a private jet. I reassured him I'd return. We pulled up to the house. I opened the front door and stepped into a large foyer, the sharp click of my heels echoing on the marble floor. Jermaine's girlfriend greeted me curtly before running to the phone. I knew she was calling my brother to tell them I was home, but apparently she wasn't able to reach anyone. Girl, the girlfriend is this lady. Meanwhile, my cousin Tony, who worked for the family, watched every move I made. Then I went to my room. I opened the door and gasped. Stunned at what I saw, my bedroom had been turned into a storeroom for Jermaine's clothes. Please stay tuned for this Jackson Family Values book. Because when I say interpretation is everything, Latoya girl, this song is not about you. This book is about you. But girl, every song ain't about you. She crept into her mammy's room, right? You know how your mother had tons and tons of pictures of you growing up in your house and, you know, stuff like that. You know, just pictures every fucking way. All right? But she goes into her mother's room and she don't see no pictures of herself. So she in her feelings. As long as I could remember, she kept dozens of portraits and snapshots of her children everywhere, organized in little groups. I looked in the familiar places, desperately scanning each framed image of my own, but they were all gone. The pictures of Michael and me clowning around, of me alone, and a very special one of mother and me. They'd all been replaced by other photographs. Looking around the room, I felt as I no longer existed. Child, that's because you won't go home. Sometimes, you know, it's not necessarily the mother and the son having no sick old relationship. Sometimes it's the mother and the daughter. Okay? Sometimes the mother won't let the daughter go. It's painful for Catherine right now. It's painful to see how her child is being manipulated by a pimp. If you had a daughter, wouldn't you feel messed up if you knew she was running cross country giving all that she got? Taking the pictures down, I believe, is what Catherine is doing to protect herself. Closing my eyes, I heard the voices of my brothers and sisters singing and laughing throughout the house. I thought about the happy times, the wonderful memories I'd all Always cherish. My, my parents could destroy all of my memories, but those memories would always be safe in my heart. Closing my mother's bedroom door, I took a deep breath, wiped my eyes, and started down the stairs. The heavy front door closed behind me. I got into the car and rode through the iron gates for the very last time. I was going home. <laughs> Thank you.